there is emerging evidence that your microbiome can affect your mood and your mood affects your microbiome. Let's look at a little bit of the evidence. It turns out you have two brains. Yes, two brains. One of the brains you know about, it's between your ears and it's part of the central nervous system. You use it to think, to command your voluntary muscles and a whole bunch of other things. But there is a second significant mass of neuro tissue in your body called the enteric nervous system and it surrounds your digestive tract. If you think about it, pun intended, Having an ENS makes sense. Digestion of food is a complex process and your body needs to direct the activities of the cells surrounding your digestive tract so that the food is broken down and nutrients are taken up effectively. There needs to be a lot of communication between the neuro tissue directing the process and your gut and it makes sense to have this tissue close to the action. The ENS spares the CNS from having to think about digestion and let's face it, who wants to think about that? Science refer to the ENS as our second brain, highlighting how important and active it is. The ENS controls the digestion and also communicates with the CNS. This communication is happening in both directions. It will come as no surprise to you that your emotional state can affect the function of your gastrointestinal tract. Anyone who has ever been nervous can attest to the gut disturbances that can accompany an anxious emotional state. You may find it shocking to learn that the opposite also appears to be true. A change in your gut can affect your emotional state. Your gut microbiota communicates with your brain using the nervous system, the endocrine system, and the immune system to influence your mood. Let's look at the evidence. The first study that we're going to look at is by Zhang et al. and examines the connection between anxiety, depression, and the microbiome. Before we look at the results, let's set up the experiment. In this study, the microbiomes of human patients were transplanted into germ-free mice. The control, referred to as con in this, were people who are not depressed. The test group, DEP, were people who were clinically diagnosed with severe depression. Fecal samples were collected from each group and transplanted into germ-free mice. The mice were then tested for anxiety and depression. Wait, you might say, how do you test a mouse to see if it is depressed? You can't ask it or look to see if it has a little frown on its face. There are ways to do it, and the behavior of animals in these tests has been shown to correlate with physiological changes in the mouse brain that are markers for depression and anxiety. These tests have been verified to detect what they claim to be detecting by numerous different experiments. The open field test is a measure of anxiety. A mouse is let free in a square box and allowed to run around for a set time tracing the path it takes. An anxious mouse will spend more time near the edge of the box. The four swim tests and the tail suspension tests are measurements of depression. In the four swim test, a mouse is put into water with no chance of escape. The tail suspension test is just what it seems. A mouse is suspended from its tail with no ability to reach any side walls or support. In both cases, the amount of time spent inactive is a measurement of depression. What were the results? As you can see, mice with microbiomes from depressed humans spent more time immobile in both the force swim test and the tail suspension test. The results of these tests indicate that mice with the microbiomes from depressed humans were more depressed than mice who receive microbiomes from non-depressed humans. The results were statistically significant. That's what the little asterisks mean. Anxiety was also increased in these mice as shown by the open field test. The test mice spent less time in the center and more time on the sides demonstrating anxiety. The microbiomes of these mice were sequenced 
and there were differences between the test and control groups. The conclusion, the microbiota influences emotional state. Let's move on to another experiment. In this experiment, the composition of the diet and its apparent influence on the microbiome also appears to affect cognitive ability. Here, rats were fed four different diets, a control rat chow diet, a diet high in saturated fatty acids, the SFA diet, a diet high in polyunsaturated fats, the PUFA diet, or P-U-F-A, and a diet high in sugar, the sugar diet. All of the diets had the same number of calories to prevent a calorie deficits or excess calories influencing the results. After two weeks on these diets, the cognitive ability of the rats was tested. First, all the rats underwent from a familiarization phase with the test environment. The environment resembled the box used in the open field test, except two objects were placed in the center that the rats were then removed from the environment and after a few minutes put back in but in the meantime the environment was changed in the object task one of the objects was switched for a new one in the place task one of the objects was moved from the center to a corner the amount of time spent exploring each of the objects was then tested these tests measure the rats ability to remember the environment and discern what was novel about it. The researchers monitor how much time the rat explores the new object versus the old object. The graphs are a ratio of the time spent exploring new objects divided by the time spent exploring old objects and new objects. A rat who remembers the environment will spend more time exploring the new object versus the old one. In the object test, there was no significant difference in the rats' behaviors. But in the place task, rats who consumed the saturated fatty acid or sugar diet spent far less time with the object that was moved. Again, the microbiomes of the rats were sequenced to determine differences, and there were differences. In just two weeks, they could detect differences. Each diet encouraged the growth of distinct species, and it appears the presence of these species affected the cognitive ability of the rats. Exposure to diets high in saturated fats or sugar impaired their performance in the place task. Other research has shown that rats who do poorly in the place task have alterations in their hippocampus. It seems the microbiome in these rats is somehow changing the function of the hippocampus. We have covered just two examples showing the influence the intestinal microbiome can have on emotions and cognitive ability. These have been done in laboratory animals, but there's many more studies, and some of them have been done, have been done on humans. Individuals with irritable bowel syndrome and Crohn's disease have higher levels of depression and anxiety. They also have an altered microbiome. In this case, this appears to be a two-way influence. It is understandable that individuals with these illnesses would have a less favorable outlook on life, but the altered microbiome may be influencing brain activity, amplifying the bad mood. In support of the role of the microbiome, experiments have shown that patients with IBS who consume probiotics have decreases in abdominal pain, bloating, flatulence, and an overall decrease in symptoms. Other experiments have also shown a reduction in anxiety and depression in IBS patients who consume probiotics. It is not clear what the best strain is for treatment of IBS or Crohn's disease at this time, but cultures of Bifidobacterium and Lactobacillus species seem to be most effective. Visceral pain is a vague, diffuse, and poorly defined sensation. Patients who experience it are often suffering from disturbances of organs, such as the heart, bladder, kidneys, and intestines. Visceral pain caused by disorders of the intestines is common, and experiments with Bifidobacterium, Lactobacillus, and Streptococcus species have been found to be effective at decreasing this pain perception. 
The take home message from these investigations is clear. There is communication between the gut and brain, and it travels both ways. Surprisingly, at least to me, the microbiome influences this communication and does this through several pathways, including stimulating nerves and by influencing hormone production or degradation. Diet has long been known to influence the composition of the microbiome, and this change in the microbiome can affect communication between the gut and brain, changing your mood. The influence of our microbiome on our brain is a fascinating subject, and further work in this area may lead to simple treatments for anxiety, depression, IBS, Crohn's disease, and many others.